Hello everyone and welcome back to uh, CIS 165 JavaScript Online. I'm your instructor Victor Campos again. So let's get started with lesson five. Here's what we're going to end up with. We're going to do our very own Marvel superheroes versus villains game. So we're going to have a hero versus a villain and we're going to get a result. So we're going to choose a hero and a villain to fight. So I'll click the button to fight and I get Jean Grey versus Doctor Doom. Jean Grey wins. Her power levels are higher than Doctor Doom's. Okay, another fight. We got the Invisible Woman doc versus Doctor Doom. Oh no, Invisible Woman loses. Uh, she was having a bad day and Doctor Doom beat her. Let's do another one. Invisible Woman versus Kingpin and Invisible Woman loses again. The Thing versus Magneto. The Thing is lost. Alright, so that's going to be our game. These different Marvel superheroes and villains are going to battle each other with their various power levels and there will be winners and there will be losers. So I'm going to set up a Lesson uh, 5 folder. I'm going to copy the basic project as always. I can call that Lesson 5 Practice open visual code, set the folder to the project, and uh, we will set up our basic items here. Lesson 5 practice. This will be Marvel Heroes versus Villains. Remember to put your name. The purpose of this project will be a focus on DOM manipulation. With again a use of arrays, functions, and constructors. This will be due on 10.17. Okay, so in order to have that basic layout, we need to uh, divide up our screen into a couple of columns. Well, let's say first uh, I'm going to add a button because this is going to require a button press, so we just use the button tag and we'll call this button fight. This needs a unique ID, so we'll call that btn make fight. Then we need a div. This div will be our main container, which then needs a left column, a, a right column, and a center column. So I'll put some divs inside of this main div, and each one should have a unique ID so that we can reference it. Div show fight, left call, right call, center call. Each one of them has a unique identifier so that we can uh, fill them with content but also style them. And We're going to start off with a basic bit of styling. So we'll back up to our style block. We're going to write our custom CSS code here of course. Pound div show fight. The width of that will be 100%. So the outer container will stretch out the width of the screen then pound left call. So that we can see it, I'm going to put a background color of blue, blue for the good guys, text color of white so that we can see the text on top of it, text dash align center so that our text is centered into that column. And the way that this works is that we have a left column and a right column. Well, that means that the width of the left column is going to be 50% of the container the div show fight container takes 100% width and half of that is the left column so width of 50%. I also need to do this bit of CSS trick here to actually make each column uh, on the same row float left. We'll see how that works in a moment. I need to define then the right call same sort of way basically this will have a background color we'll do red for the bad guys color of text also white so that we can view it. Text align center also. The width of that is the remaining 50% of the containing space and also float left. It would sound odd you would think float right but this is the way we need to do it so that everything lines up in the same row in the separate columns. And the final one is the pound center call. That's our third ID, our third div. Now playing around a little bit, 
while testing this, I found that about 98% is a good width so that it fills that container properly. And then we need a property and value of clear both. This is just something we often need to do when dealing with columns in CSS. Text align center so that that text also is centered. So this is a little bit of styling and these are attached to these various divs. Divs uh, have no inherent meaning but we've given them some meaning with some CSS. And I'm also going to put that if I get back down to line 35. This is the hero column. Line 36 is the villain column. And then the next one is the result column. So if I check that result in the browser, I have a left column, a right column, and a center column. I will display the hero's picture, name, and stats. Same thing for the villain. When I make them fight, then the result will appear below them. We're then going to focus on our uh, JavaScript. So I'll go over to line 40 where I'll start writing my JavaScript. I'll take out that placeholder. We'll start our iffy, as always. So a couple of parentheses, function, open close, open close curly brace. Then we break that. And again, we're using strict mode. That should hopefully be helping in debugging. Next line, we'll create a var called max stats. What this stat is, um, these uh, superheroes and villains are going to be defined by uh, six different dimensions of power, speed, agility, etc. So the maximum number of stats is what this variable is holding. There will be six different dimensions of power that each villain and hero is defined by. Comma, I'm also going to create another var and call this one max stats val. The value, the maximum value that these heroes and villains can get to is seven units. So these are numeric types, no strings. So a person can have speed of one or a speed of seven, somewhere in the middle between one and seven. I'll create another var block. This one is for our hero name. We will list all of the heroes in an array. So array syntax. I'm going to create more than one var in a moment, so I'll put a comma there. But I'll start off with three heroes. So this, these are strings, so I would write them then in uh, quotes. So we've got Spider-Man, Daredevil, and the thing. We will have hero strength. That is going to be an array of possible strengths. We don't know just yet, so that'll be an empty array. Then we have hero speed. All of the possible speed levels. Hero agility. All of these will be arrays. Hero stamina. Hero durability. Hero intelligence. We'll create a hero name, Len, which is based on hero name dot length property. So at the moment, that'll be three, because we have three hero names in the array. We're going to construct these heroes, and then uh, that means that we'll have Spider-Man with a certain speed, Strength, agility, stamina, durability, intelligence. We'll have Daredevil with his own strength, speed, agility, stamina, durability, intelligence levels, and so forth. So we need to, that's going to be an object for each one of these uh, heroes and villains. So they'll be stored in an array as well. And we'll call this hero all. That's an empty array at the moment. We haven't constructed each individual hero yet. We will need to know how many heroes we have saved. So hero all len. And that'll be based on hero all dot length. At the moment, that's zero because we've defined an array, but we haven't put anything in it, so the length is zero. And then hero image. 
This is an array that lists the pictures that we will use for these heroes and villains. And I've got a few that you can use that I've set up just for ease of our work. Oh, and I'll end the line right there. So uh, notice I've got commas on all of those until the final one. This is going to be an array of web addresses. I've got these uploaded to a server. You just need to point your image tag to these images and you'll be able to display a nice picture of each hero. So it's going to be a string and it's going to be an address. I'm going to include this, these addresses in the blackboard so you won't have to type them and misspell them. But if you can type this you'll be able to access the particular images. They're going to be in this sort of format. https colon slash slash vmc inc dot files dot wordpress dot com slash 2016 slash 10 slash spiderman dot ping and it's going to be the same path so I'm just going to copy this part here except for the final file. I'm going to copy that comma, quotes, paste, then we've got daredevil, I made it pretty easy, dot ping, comma, quotes, paste, then we've got same path, but then thing, dot ping. Again, I'll have a list of those in Blackboard, so you can copy and paste, but the path is pretty straightforward. That line should end with a semicolon. Next line, the way that these heroes and villains will be defined, their power levels, will be a good old random number between 1 and 7. So, we need to do a for loop to generate uh, 6 different dimensions of power which go from 1 to 7. 4 of var from i of 0 to i less than max stats. Recall that max stats is set to 6. We have 6 dimensions of power which are strength, speed, agility, stamina, durability, intelligence. If I added one more like uh, energy projection then I would change max stats to uh, 7 and therefore we're gonna loop through this uh, for statement 7 times. In our case it's 6 times. Semicolon I++ plus plus so that we can loop in the for statement. We will create six different random numbers for each dimension of power. First we can do uh, hero ran, this is the random, hero ran strength. It will be math dot random times max stat value max stat val, which is 7. So it'll be random number times 7. That's the maximum uh, level of power they can have for uh, speed or strength, for example. Well, I need to round that up because I don't want to include the possibility of a 0. So math.seal will round that up. We've seen this before. We're rounding up. Now it'll be from 1 to 7 comma. I'm going to do the same thing again. So this will be a little tedious, but once we have the algorithm set up, uh, it, it'll go much faster. So hero ran speed. This is the random speed value. Again, math.seal. I'm going to copy and paste this in a moment to save myself some typing. Math.random times max stat val. This time I will copy that line, and all I need to change is hero ran agility. Paste it again, hero ran stamina. Again, durability. And one more. Hero ran intelligence. End of statement, so semicolon there. So I've just devised six random numbers from 1 to 7. Those will be used 
and placed into the various arrays that are waiting for me up here. Hero strength, hero speed, etc. So that'll be pushing into the array. We're still in the array because we need to do this for every character. At the moment, three characters. Hero strength dot push and we're pushing in hero ran strength hero speed dot push hero ran speed hero agility dot push hero ran agility hero stamina hero ran stamina hero durability and hero intelligence so we have three possible heroes we have arrays to give each of them a strength a speed and agility a stamina a durability and an intelligence we can then begin to construct each one of these as an object so let's set up an object constructor. Next line, function, super character. This will be a, a hero or a villain. Capital letters, because it is an object constructor. And it's got various parameters. Name, strength, speed, agility, stamina, durability and intelligence and image each one will have an image to go along with the character we've seen this before we will be setting our properties for our object based on the arguments provided So those are the object properties and values. We need two methods. These will help us to uh, determine uh, who can win in a fight and display their stats on screen. The easier one to do is this dot power. So the power is based on each of these dimensions, strength through intelligence. And so that'll be a method, so we're defining a function inside of this object. Var all power. And that's a simple addition of each of these individual dimensions of power. Since, since it's a plain old number, these are going to be added which will give us a variable called all power and we will return all power one more method this dot stats this method will help us to easily display all of these separate dimensions of power var all stats this is going to be a string let me write it like this first ul slash ul this is going to be a simple bullet point list it's going to display in a list strength speed agility etc well we're going to need to display these bullet points per character so we're going to need to get creative with our string creation here I'm going to do this where I divide up the opening and closing unordered list tags break this into its own line maybe tab it over for readability I need a, a list item at the end of that plus so it starts an unordered list on line 89 and then ends at 91 and in the middle it's gonna have six different bullet points in this sort of format so I'll copy and paste so I'm going to display each of those uh, dimensions of power. 
I will say strength, speed, agility, stamina, durability, and intelligence. And those will be based on the uh, arguments supplied. So we need to then further quote space plus end quote because we need to at this point take this dot strength the strength that was supplied plus so we're going to display a little bit of the HTML markup to start the list item the actual current value of strength and then the end of that uh, list item so I would do the same thing for the next part and then I need to return that string that I've created all stats next we'll go outside of the constructor so this is line 100 and based on the items in the defined arrays so now we can define each object or each character so we'll need to do a loop here var i starting at 0 i less than hero name len so how, however many heroes we have at the moment 3 i++ plus plus. what we're going to be doing is creating a var object of a hero which is a new instance of super character we have these parameters we need to fill in right name strength speed agility stamina durability intelligence image so these are coming from the various arrays that we have set up hero name hero strength etc so we're going to say hero name index i we're borrowing the i of this loop to give us the zero with name which would be spider-man then we're passing in hero strength also i hero speed hero agility hero stamina hero durability hero intelligence and hero image so that will create one hero object based on the zero with item of each of these arrays we have the hero all array that we need to push this uh, hero into to store it in that array and just to see us creating each of these heroes why not also give us some console output we should do it now anyway in case we are making a mistake we've done a lot of typing and haven't been quite checking our code yet let's see what happens so I'm gonna load this in the browser and open up the console uncaught reference error max stat val is not defined okay that's good and bad it's bad that I have a mistake but it's good to do a little debugging so let's see what's happening on line 59 what did I mistype line 59 max stat val uh, let's see that should be back here uh, oh max stats val I wrote max stat val now I wrote max stat val six times incorrectly so I could either fix all of those or fix the one item up here so I'm gonna do that if you misspelled it um, make sure you fix that if you didn't misspell it great I misspelled it so I'm gonna call that max stat val because that's what I ended up using six times over here so it's either fix my six mistakes down here or fix my one mistake up there as long as they're consistent it's not a mistake now let's see 
All right, hero ran intelligence is not defined. Of course not. I misspelled intelligence, which shows mine. Line 71. Here we go, hero ran intelligence. Two L's. Refresh that. Hero name Len is not defined. So again, uh, making a lot of probably simple spelling mistakes, but that happens to the best of us, and it's okay uh, to break the illusion that I can write flawless code because I make mistakes as well. Let's see, line 101. Hero name Len, if I select that, that should then pop up elsewhere. Um, hero name Len. Oh, here we go. I misspelled it on line 53 a while ago. I just called it her line, her name Len. Sorry about that. Hero name Len. If you saw my mistake as I was typing at and you were yelling at me to fix it, I'm, I apologize. I didn't hear it. All right, here we go. So now we're getting some output here in the console. Super character, name, Spider-Man, strength 6, speed 1, agility 6, stamina 1, etc. Daredevil, strength 4, speed 5, agility 4, etc. Thing, speed, strength 7, agility, and so forth. If I refresh that, I get different stats. This time Spider-Man's got a strength of 3, Daredevil 4, uh, Thing 2. Refresh that, another randoms. So cool, I am able to create my different um, characters. You can further open that up to see the data in a different way as well and there's a picture. That'll need to be displayed on screen eventually of course. If this is working for our heroes we need to do something very similar for our villains. So I had a section where I defined the hero arrays and the hero numbers. So let's say before super character uh, function, I will do the same thing for villains. So I'll give myself some space before that. Var villain name. We'll do Venom. Kingpin. And the super scroll. Another variable, so comma for the next line. Villain strength and I think you get the idea here so I'll just do this quickly it's the same as heroes and then when I get to the villain image it's again like the hero array and it's basically the same address but with the name of the villain in the file name so I'll copy the whole um, path at the top there for the heroes paste that in and then again I made it pretty easy venom.png another one kingpin.ping and one more super scroll no dash dot ping so here I've defined the various arrays for the villain characters I need to create a loop to define then the dimensions of power for the villains. That'll go from i0 to i less than max stats. All of the villains will also have the same number of stats. Var villain ran strength is made of math dot seal which rounds up math.random, which is multiplied by max stat val. I remember it was max stats val, but I ended up going with singular. And then I'll do the rest. Intelligence is the last one, so don't forget to uh, end that statement with semicolon. I've made all of those random stats for each of those arrays so again then I need to push these values into my waiting arrays. We have villain strength dot push and we're pushing in the newly created villain ran 
strength and so forth all right so this should uh, populate my arrays now it's time to create the three objects of these villains so I'll go back down to about line 134 I had that for loop that let me loop and create um, the heroes var i zero i less than villain name len i plus plus and in this case we're creating var a villain equal to new super character we use the same constructor and we know that we're going to um, villain all push the uh, villain and we know that we're going to put that in the console just to see some of our result the arguments are going to be in the same vein as the uh, hero so that'll be villain name i villain strength i so forth all right so let's see where I made some spelling mistakes I'm gonna save my work and run it oh no spelling mistakes so we've got first uh, the character of spider-man daredevil and thing that worked before and now we've got venom kingpin and super scroll venom strength 4 kingpin strength uh, 4 and super scroll strength 3 very cool so we've created each of these heroes and villains. I think it's time to have them battle now. So we've also got the method that will determine their total power based on their different dimensions of power. Let's output that to the console just so that we see a fuller picture of what these characters look like. I'm going to comment out that console output on those two force statements just because I'm going to see a lot in my console. If I don't, it's optional, but I, I want a little bit of a cleaner uh, console. After the force statement, I also want to reinitialize my hero all len variable to be the latest hero all dot length. I'm doing this because way back at the top I had said hero all len to hero all length which was empty on line 54 but by the time we get to line 140 now that array does have at least three characters and same thing with villain all len That'll be villain all dot length. That is being reinitialized because we had it set to zero. And now we do have villain, so we'll save that because that's necessary on the next few lines here. We will do another for loop. This one is based on i less than hero all len. And I'm going to simply give myself some console output. First of all, I want to say hero all. First of all, from my hero all array, I'm going to say give me the i dot name. Give me the name of the current index value of the hero plus total power. Show that on screen in the console. Hero all i dot power method in theory we could piggyback on this same for statement to display the villain results we would be reusing hero all len but we've got three heroes three villains so it would work but if we had three heroes versus two villains this wouldn't this wouldn't quite work it would give us some undefined results so I am going to then create another for loop for the villains because the villain uh, arrays could be different. And here it is here, villain all len. Console output, same as before. 
villain all i dot name i should put a space before total power so it'll show the name of the character space total power and then the particular villain all i value power method checking that in the browser spider-man total power 30 daredevil 34 venom 24 etc i refresh i get different power levels so this total power level then you should see is that addition of the individual power levels this is how we can determine if a, if a particular hero beats a particular villain in this case we would see that spider-man would lose to venom but spider-man would beat the super scroll that'll be displayed of course to the user on screen once we fight and to show that it was a fair fight we're also going to display all of the individual stats of each villain and hero to show that result on screen back to the code after those couple of for loops now we need to make that button active document dot get element by id btn make fight dot on click equals the function which runs fight function which we need to define i'm going to leave the skeleton at the moment i'm going to need to fill that in in detail of course but I'm going to leave that skeleton there as is for the moment because what I also want to do is to take a moment to create some vars to store the objects um, in the HTML block so that I can manipulate them. Uh, those various divs, I need to store references to them so that I can manipulate, that is, add data to those objects. We have var, we'll call this L element show fight. This element is made from document dot get element by ID. And it's going to be the ID div show fight. We need another element, L div hero. The left div is the hero div document dot get element by ID left call L div villain right call L div result document dot get element by ID and that is our center call I'll end that statement there so now as chapter 5 goes on to go into detail about selecting nodes in our HTML document, here we've created objects uh, that reference those nodes. Now we can turn our attention over to that fight function. This will be several lines of code, so I'll break those curly braces. We need to pick a random hero and a random villain, then we need to check their power levels. Whoever has the higher power level wins. Then we display that on screen. So I'll start off with a var to select a random hero, math.floor. We need to round down from the array of heroes because we start at zero. Remember, we've got three heroes, so that's zero, one, two. So we're going to round down, math.random. We will randomly choose a hero times hero all len the total number of heroes is currently three so we need to select a random number rounded down from zero to two and also a random villain same idea rounding down to include zero creating a random number multiplied by villain all len so here I'm choosing a possible index value of each of the arrays. And just out of curiosity, uh, I would want to display that in the console. So console log, I have the hero all array. And then I have the random hero 
index give me the name of that particular hero and then console log villain all based on the current random villain number dot name show me the name property of that so to see the result I'll go to my browser refresh that and remember this happens with a button click so I'll click fight thing versus super scroll now I'd have to go back here to see that at the moment thing was 23 super scroll was 21 the thing would have won if I fight again we get thing versus kingpin so again 23 versus 23 that would have been a tie we get Daredevil versus Super Scroll. Daredevil 18 versus 21. Daredevil would have lost. Okay, so it seems to be working so far. We need to display this stuff on screen in the hero and villain columns. This is all going to work with a big old if else if statement. We're going to check for the possibility there's either a tie, that is, that the hero and villain power is the same, there is a win which is the hero's power is greater than the villain's power or else there's a loss because the hero's power is less than the villain so within the fight function after our console output here I will create an if skeleton and previously we've used if else which was just two possibilities this time I'm gonna create if else if with a final else so here is three possibilities. Check for one possibility. If that condition is met, do what's in this cent in this first block. Okay, if that one's not met, try this other possibility. If that possibility is true, then do what's in the second block. If none of those two is true, then you've got the all else fails and you write something on the third. So first I want to check, is there a tie? We're doing hero all our current random hero dot power method use that method to produce the value and then we're checking is that the same as villain all random villain dot power method triple equals Single equals is basically assignment. Take what's on the right, put it into what's on the left. We don't want that. Double equals is to check are they equal. Is the thing on the right the same thing as the same on the left? But technically, we could have instances where a 1 does not equal a 1. We could have a 1 numeric type and a 1 string type, and that could possibly be set as true. They're the same. Technically, they're not. One is numeric, one is string. So to be the most accurate in checking, triple equals. Is the value of the thing on the left and the right the same, but also the type, the data type? Is it number versus number, rather than number versus string? So this result would be, for the moment, we'll do console log, because we still need to do some setup. In this case, this would have been a tie. If the random hero versus the random villain's power is the same it's a tie well next we would check is the hero's power greater than the villain hero all the random hero's power is it greater than villain all random villains power the console then will show that that is a win. The third possibility then is a loss. We don't even have to check for a condition. That's the third condition. So simply console log loss. The hero lost. All right, let's check. Let's check the web browser. Refresh my code. Fight. Thing versus Venom. Loss. Okay, checking back here. Thing 23. Venom 24. Fight again. Uh, 
uh, we were going to get something, but I misspelled console. Oh, that's here. So that was going to be a win, but since I misspelled it, it broke. Console. Sorry about that. Check those little misspellings. So we get some new stats. Fight. Spider-Man versus Venom. A win. Spider-Man's power, 24. Venom, 20. That's a loss for Daredevil. A win for the thing. A win for Daredevil. Daredevil wins again. Daredevil lost against the Super Scroll. In this case, there would not be a possibility of a tie. 24, 22, 28 versus 20, 21, 23. So the algorithm is working. We've got heroes with random stats that are fighting against each other, which could create win, lose, or draw scenarios. Once that works, for the developer, let's display it on screen. We've got these placeholders where we can use DOM uh, manipulation to change what's on screen to show the appropriate results. All right, starting with the tie result. We have the L div hero object dot inner HTML property. We're going to rewrite what's in that node on screen. We're going to display a little bit of HTML heading to plus hero all random hero name. We were putting that into the console. Now we'll actually display it on screen in a nice pretty heading two. I want to display the picture of the hero. So in the same element, L div hero dot inner HTML, this time plus equals. I'm building a string, so equals is start the string uh, and put it into that element with some HTML. And then we're adding more to that string. That's the plus equals. Next, I want to display the image. Well, this one's going to be an image tag. Image has a source attribute. Now, here's the thing. When we deal with uh, quotes inside of quotes, normally I would type the double quote right there. The problem here is we just broke things. This first quote is getting closed by this quote. A new quote begins and ends there. And in the middle, this is empty here. So this is an example where our source will be with single quotes. Now, the, now this double quote begins here, and its pair is at the end of the tag. The single quote begins here, and ends in here, so I can put picture.jpg. So you see that. Those double quotes would have broken the string. Single quotes. Well, in the single quotes, I would put the particular image of the particular hero or villain. That's something that I need to get out of the array. We will actually close the string here. Double quote, space, plus, double quote. Be very careful that you type this exactly like I did, because this double quote here closes this double quote here. This single quote opens and then eventually closes over here. And in the middle, I'm going to display the item from the array. So plus space hero all random hero dot image space plus. Very easy to forget about that as well. We still have more to write, but let's uh, let's see if we're on the right track so far. Um, this uh, is a result of a um, a tie, but the same code to display the hero's name and picture will be necessary in a win situation. So I'll paste it, and it will also be necessary in a loss situation. Let's see if this works. Refresh my code, fight. There we go. It's displaying the hero's name and their picture. We will change the style of the picture because it's bursting outside of its container. Well, if you've got your screen maximized like that, you might not see a difference. Uh, but we do want to affect the sizes of the pictures and such. That'll be through CSS, through JavaScript. 
we've got a, a hero appearing. We want to display then the villain's name and picture. Very similar code. I'll start back on the tie result. We'll do L div villain dot inner HTML equals start again a heading two. Add to that villain all random villain dot name. Close that H two. L div villain dot inner HTML. We're going to display the image tag. So again, I'll do the same thing. Double quote semicolon to end that line. Image tag src equals single quotes. And there, I would simply put you know venom dot ping, but we're doing it with the random generator. So we need to close those double quotes. Villain all random villain dot image. Oh, and I was about to forget then plus right there to continue that string. And that uh, little chunk of code I need to paste as is to my um, win and loss contingencies. Let's check the result in the browser. Fight. Spider-Man versus Super Scroll. This got a little bit weird. Let's see if I misspelled anything. Oh yes, here I'm forgetting the plus because we are adding to the existent string. See, very easy to forget that. Equals is basically replace the thing on the left with the thing on the right. Plus equals is add a little bit more. So what I really wanted was, there we go, name, then picture, name, then picture. And then in this case, ooh, the classic Spider-Man versus Venom. And what my console is telling me, that would have been a win. So I would need to display that on screen in the result column. So we have our code for the left column, the right column, we need the center column. So we'll go back to the tie section, we have ldiv result inner HTML. This one's going to be simpler than the other ones. This will be h3. We have a tie. We have the possibility of the hero winning, so ldiv result inner HTML h3 we want to say the name of the hero has won or the name of the hero has lost so we need to break this up as we've seen before so that I can get the dynamic value of hero all random hero name in the string I want it to say wins and basically I want that same string but we'll just change it to loss for my final else still using the same div writing some HTML it's a heading 3 it's the same hero that we're talking about but this time we're saying loses so we'll refresh that fight thing versus super scroll Oops, what did I mistype here? Line 189, right here, div result. Okay, that backs up here to an error I made a while ago. So I am referencing properly spelling L div result on line 155, but I mistyped the actual ID, center call, capital C. Again, you may have caught it as I was typing it and you were yelling it to me, but I didn't hear you. Fight. Daredevil versus Venom, Daredevil loses. That's what my console is saying there, because Daredevil's power is 19, and Venom's is 25. Another fight, Thing versus Kingpin, that's a tie. Thing has 24, Kingpin has 24. Well, I want to display to the user, why did the thing win? Why did the thing lose? I want to display all of those different dimensions of power. And I have that method, stats. 
So I want to display the stats below the picture. Back to the first if block, back to the section of the hero, line 167L div hero dot inner HTML plus equals some string. We'll put this in a paragraph. Well, I need dynamic information, so once again, I'm going to need to break up this string into multiple substrings to display the dynamic data from the arrays. So quote space plus quote. After the first plus, we're going to say hero all random hero in question dot stats method. This is the one that builds that um, unordered list space plus. This builds that unordered list of each of the particular stats. We need the same code for the else if on line 177 and we need then that same code in line 187 for the loss. We'll do vil villain in a moment. Let's see here, so refresh that fight daredevil versus venom that was a win because daredevil's strength speed agility stamina durability and intelligence wins out i misspelled speed there these bullet points look a little weird too we'll fix that but let's get the villains stats to appear same sort of code but uh particularly for the villain so back to line 171 l div villain dot inner html plus equals new paragraph break the string there plus break the string there villain all random villain dot stats method plus and then same thing for the other two conditions. Refresh and fight again. Daredevil versus Kingpin, classic. Daredevil wins. Strength 6, speed 7, agility 7. Uh, he must have been out drinking at the moment, intelligence not so high. But that beats uh, uh, Kingpin's current strength and stamina and such. Very cool. So I'm going to fix that speed. That was just a little misspelling back up here, line uh, 119, capital S. This is cosmetic, it's not a big deal, but of course I want to make sure my code works how I wanted it to. Fight, thing versus kingpin, thing wins. Well, I want this text to highlight as the same color of either the winner or the loser, uh, the villain or the hero. Remember, the hero is blue, the villain is red. So I want the center column text to highlight to one of those two colors. If there's a tie, I want it to highlight to yellow. So this will be some more DOM manipulation. We're going to reference a node and change its class on the fly. Right now, there's no class, so we will add a class that is some CSS on the fly. That requires us to set up some CSS. We're going to back up to the top of the document. We're going to set up some more CSS to account for a win, a loss, or a draw, and paint those colors into the screen as necessary. So after these existing bits of code for these, for these IDs, we need to write some classes. We're going to reuse this code so a class would work best. I'm going to say dot fight tie background color yellow color of text black we've got then dot fight win the winner has a background color of blue for the hero, color of text white, and then dot fight lose, 
background color of red to den to denote the the villain has one and color of text also to white now in order for us to attach the appropriate css the appropriate class name to the div waiting for us right here of center call this is again more javascript the concepts we learned in chapter 5 all right so to highlight that particular div it's l div result line 187 l div result is the object in question the node in question we will set dot class name equal to our waiting css which is fight tie this class will now be applied via this property to this object or node same thing for a win l div result dot class name note the capital n equal to some class the class is fight win and then we'll go to loss l div result dot class name set that to the class of fight lose let's check the browser and we can see very quickly then daredevil wins thing loses you see how that uh, center then changes based on which character uh, wins or loses it's a little annoying annoying to scroll up and down you may have a nice big monitor but I have to scroll up and down so let's change the size of these pictures so that they don't take up so much space we're gonna set some class names but we need some CSS first we'll back up to the top again we've got the classes of fights now we'll need a class for the image so dot image height this will be just a very simple so I'll keep it on one line but I'll say height and you can experiment with the size of this yourself but I'm gonna go with 360 pixels I wanna make the images a particular height so we've got the class image height we want to apply that to our images back to the if statement starting with the tie for the hero we need to target the image in the hero column to apply that class and then we need to target the villain image in the villain column to apply that class so we should create a couple more um, node references so let's back up actually on line 167 we started to create these element references let's create another one for the images on uh, the project so before the end of the line of 170 replace that with a comma we'll do l i m g all equals document dot get elements plural by tag name here we're saying let's get all of the instances of image there's two images on the screen so this will save a node list of both of those images into the uh, variable l image all end of line semicolon so what we can do in the if statement is say l image all brackets zero the zeroth image the first image which should be the hero because it's in that order the hero image is the first image the villain image is the second image so this is in an array um, syntax dot class name equal to the name of the class we created at the top image height for the villain similar thing l image all but this time index one the second image set its class name 
to the same image height. This should shrink both of those images down to 360 pixels tall. I need to copy and paste that into each of the other conditions. So again, I'm not going to lie and say that this project to some degree is not tedious, but if you get what you're doing, you're going to see that you'll be able to copy and paste, you'll be able to uh, fix this as necessary pretty quickly. And you see what I'm doing for the villain is same code, but I'm making sure that the index is 1. It's the second item, the second image on screen. Checking our code, this is how big our images are at the moment. I will refresh, fight. The images are a little smaller, a little more manageable. I don't have to scroll around to see the result. Spider-Man versus Venom, oh, Spider-Man lost. Spider-Man versus Kingpin, he lost again. Daredevil versus Venom, Daredevil lost again. The villains are pretty strong today. Thing beat Venom, however. Can we get any tie value? Well, if we look at our console, it would be impossible. None of them have the same, uh, the same power level, but let's see if I can get the same power levels. So there's a possibility here. Daredevil 23, Super Scroll 23. So perhaps at a certain point as I fight them, I can make that possibility happen. There we go. Daredevil versus Super Scroll, it's a tie. All of these various power levels add up to the same thing. And that's a win. So actually I'm seeing a little bit of empty space there. I can fix that. Thing versus Kingpin is a tie. So I can fix that empty spot, that's actually line 25, my center call, well I guess I should have put that at 100, and now all of that lines up. Spider-Man wins. The last thing that I need is, uh, these bullet points look weird, I've centered my items, but the bullet points have stayed to the left. So I want to change these bullet point text items to be aligned to the left, just like the bullet points themselves. This will require some CSS, and then we'll attach that CSS to those node elements. Line 44, we will create dot ul text left, so that I can set my text alignment to the left. I'm going to attach text alignment left to multiple items. So that'll be similar to what I did to in one line 73. I need to create a variable to store a list of all possible bullet point lists. So at the end of line 173, comma, el, ul all. And that's made out of document.getElements, make sure that's a plural, by tag name. And I'm talking about UL. Every unordered list, store it as a node list in this variable. So that, in the if block, I can manipulate that. First for the hero, then the villain. So in addition to manipulating the L image all, line 188, L U L all, mind that uh, spelling, same thing, array syntax of the zero with item dot class name to set the class name to U L text left. I would copy that and paste it in the next block for the hero and then the next block for the hero. Same code for the villain. Notice here it's not really taking into account left column, right column, doesn't matter. There's a node list and it doesn't matter where it exists um, in, the, in the divs and we can manipulate them. Just make sure of course you're targeting the index value 1 of that node list. There we go the stats have aligned to the left. Spider-Man versus Super Scroll, a tie. 
because of all of these various dimensions of power. Reset that to get a new set of stats. Daredevil versus Kingpin. Oops, he lost. Thing versus Super Scroll. The Thing wins because of his stats. So you see here, recapping the concepts from Chapter 5, we have changed the content of these various divs via DOM manipulation. Then we resized all images from a node list, setting their classes via DOM manipulation. Then we also changed every instance of a UL. And lastly, we changed another div to correspond with its design of the appropriate result via DOM manipulation. No, Spidey, you lost. But the stats don't lie. So based on what we've done in this code, we got up to about 242 lines. The code is getting longer, but you should be seeing the repetition of these concepts. Because we've got the if, else, if block, this is just a lot of repetition, but there's logic going on. The if and the else if. Then we've got the repetition of creating the various arrays of the heroes and the villains and four loops to populate various arrays. Based on what we've done here, you will have your next homework assignment, which is due in two weeks, because it's a long project. Check Blackboard for the details, and hopefully you've created a, an enjoyable Marvel vs. Villains game. Did your favorite heroes win? So this has been Victor Campos for CIS 165. See you next time.